Good morning. I think it's time. Can we start? Do you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Oh. So, uh, welcome back to the final day of the program. The first speaker is Professor Masatsumi Honda from uh, Yukon Institute for Theoretical Physics. His uh, talk title is Digital Quantum Simulation of Higher Charge Schrodinger Model with Topological Term. So, if you are ready, please start. <laughs> Thank you very much for invitation and uh, introduction. Uh, uh, I, I'm Masadumi from Yukawa Institute for Theoretical Physics. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I'm sorry that I did not come to ABCTP directly. Uh, I, I hope to come, uh, come uh, um, maybe in this year or next year uh, or sometime. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, digital quantum simulation of uh, higher charge showing a model with a topological term. Uh, this talk is based on uh, three collaborations with uh, many people, uh, Vipasha Chakraborty, Yuta Kikuchi, uh, Taku Izubuchi, uh, Akio Tomiya, uh, Etsuko Ito, Rento Nagano, Takuya Okuda, and uh, Yuya Tanizaki. Okay. Um, let me start with the uh, introduction. So I think this is uh, already three years ago that uh, we got uh, news from Google uh, claiming that uh, Google, uh, we, we have a kind of quantum supremacy, and uh, this is a controversial on whether it is really quantum su supremacy. But uh, anyway, I got the uh, impression that the uh, uh, resource of a quantum computer uh, is growing well. So in this talk, I'd like to consider how can we use this kind of progress for particle physics, uh, because I'm a particle physicist. And in particular, uh, this talk is on application of uh, quantum computation to numerical simulation of quantum field theory. Uh, generic motivation would be, would be, we simply would like to use a powerful computer, maybe. Uh, but there is a specific motivation in this context because, um, um, uh, because if we enable use uh, apply quantum algorithm to quantum, um, in mechanical simulation of quantum field theory, um, it looks uh, Hamiltonian formalism is more suitable. And, uh, and uh, this implies a kind of a revelation from uh, infamous sign problem in Monte Carlo simulation, which I will briefly explain. Uh, so what, what's the sign problem? Uh, here, I'd like to explain uh, what, what, what is the uh, conventional approach to simulate quantum field theory. Uh, people usually consider Euclidean, usually work in Lagrangian formalism and discretize uh, Euclidean space-time by lattice like this. Then the pass infinite dimension passing integral becomes a finite dimensional integral. So the technically the problem is to, to eval evaluate the integration numerically. And typically, uh, typically people use uh, an algorithm called the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method, uh, in, in which uh, we, we regard the Boltzmann weight as a probability and approximate the vacuum expectation value by average of our samples. Uh, this is a conventional approach, but uh, obvious, obviously, uh, when the Boltzmann factor is not, not real and positive, we cannot directly apply this algorithm and uh, we, we should need some trick. And in particular, uh, uh, the Boltzmann, when Boltzmann factor is uh, not real and positive and highly oscillating, uh, it, <clears throat> and it, 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 it is known that uh, Basically, it's difficult to to, <laughs> to get a good approximation, or we need a huge complexity to get a good approximation of integration. Uh, this is a uh, roughly called sign problem, and uh, physically this uh, happens uh, when typically when we have a topological term, uh, chemical potential, and real time. In particular, when we have a real time, the Boltzmann factor becomes the exponential alias and uh, the time problem is much worse. 
but、uh, if we consider Hamiltonian form management, technically what we do is not the integration, and、uh, we do not have、uh, this kind of problem from the beginning. Uh, uh, this is a very, very rough explanation of the same problem, eh? and、uh, indeed it's, it's a bit unfair, unfair explanation.、Uh, indeed, there are various approaches within framework of passing integral formalism for the same problem, but、uh, I, I will skip it. So let me focus on. Uh, what, what happened for Hamiltonian formalism?、Um, of course, life is not so simple uh, because uh, there, instead there is a cost for Hamiltonian formalism.、Uh, the cost is that,、um, fa first,、uh, quantum field theory typically has an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, so we need to regularize it. And even after regularization,、uh, we typically have a huge vector space. So, We have to technically we have to do a linear kind of linear algebra problem in huge vector space. So, technical computers have to memorize the huge vector and multiple huge matrix. So, we have a huge complexity. So, it sounds,、uh, so it sounds、uh, difficult uh, even for I mean, for my, but,、um, but,、uh, But the quantum computers in future may do these jobs. And because a quantum computer、uh, is known to, typically,、uh, known to typically be able, able to do this kind of computation faster in future. So let, 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 let me focus on、uh, this possibility. And、uh, so, long term goal of、uh, this.、Um, My research project along this direction is like this pictorially. So we have a quantum computer, and、uh, finally, we may be able to make a accelerate the、uh, um, universe and for black hole and so on. But、uh, in this talk, I will focus on a low dimensional model called the charge Q Schrodinger model with topological term.、Uh, we have a Lagrangian here. And、uh, we have a dynamical charge of a electron, of a,、uh, charge of a dynamic electron here. And we also have a theta term. And、uh, this is supposed to be difficult to simulate、uh, this model in conventional approach because we have a real time. And、uh, we have a same problem even in Euclidean case when theta is not small. And、uh, what do we do、uh, as follows? So we construct.、Uh, Vacuum of this model, and、uh, we compute the、uh, expectation value of vacuum ex expectation value of a chiral condensation for a Fermi mass operator and the consistency check and prediction. And we also explore、uh, a problem called a screening versus confinement problem. And we also see、um, peculiar behavior called negative string tension behavior.、Uh, let me elaborate a bit. Is in next slide.、Um, what is a screening versus problem?、Uh, let's consider a potential、uh, between、uh, two heavy charged particles,、um, charge QP and minus QP. And、uh, if we consider this problem classically,、uh, potential would be like this.、Uh, this is nothing but the Coulomb law in one plus one dimension. And, and、um, this is also equivalent to confinement since we are not in. Uh, we are in one plus one dimension. But、uh, this picture is too, na too naive because、uh, we have、uh, dynamical electrons and、uh, there could be screening by pair, pair creation and annihilation. And、uh, when mass of fermion is small,、uh, there, there, is a, there are nice, nice、uh, analysis and、uh, nice analysis.、Uh, And here I, I briefly uh, introduce uh, ex expectations from、uh, results of a previous analysis.、Uh, so, indeed, there are some analytic comp computation. First, for massless case, it is known that、uh, the potential behaves like this. So, it, this is quite different from、uh, linear behavior or confinement behavior. So, we have exponentially suppressed behavior. So, this is a、uh, Interpreted as、uh, screening by dynamical fermion. 
And for massive gas, when mass is small, potential has been computed like this. So apparently, it looks like uh, proportional to distance. But uh, there are qualitatively defined behaviors depending on depending on the parameters. First, when the charge of probe is uh, is uh, proportional to Q with the uh, integer coefficient, then the coefficient vanishes. So this is also screening uh, interpreted as screening behavior. But when this is, and uh, another interesting thing is uh, even when this is non-zero, the sign of the coefficient, sign of the slope is, is not definite. It depends on parameters again. So typically we have a positive slope, but uh, sometimes we also have a negative slope. So it sounds, uh, sounds a bit strange at first size, uh, but anyway, uh, this is the previous uh, expectation from previous analysis. So let's explore this as aspect by quantum simulation. So pictorially, this is like this. Uh, so we have a cat uh, who thought, thought that the uh, opposite charge should, uh, should be attracted. But, uh, but the previous analysis implies that uh, as a changing parameter, we we may have a repulsion between opposite charge. Okay, so here I finished the introduction, and the and the next uh, I will I will give a very brief review of quantum computation, and then rely to swing our model in terms of qubit. Then I briefly explain algorithm to prepare vacuum, and then. Then briefly, uh, then introduce uh, our new maker result, uh, both without the problem and with the problem. Um, do you have any question on introduction? All right, then let's move. Oh. Hello, I, one yep. question. So the Schuncher model, has it been uh, studied using other numerical methods in the past? Uh, yes, so, for example, when Ted, First, when theta is a small or zero, uh, there, there are you make a simulation by Monte Carlo simulation. I see. Okay. And uh, also, um, also even for non-zero theta, there are some some papers, but uh, some analysis by tensor network approach. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, other question? Okay, if not, uh, uh, let me move on to a brief review of a quantum computation. So uh, first, qubit is, uh, perhaps as you already know, uh, qubit is a quantum system, uh, qubit is a quantum bit and a quantum system with two dimensional Hilbert space. We typically have, uh, we typically use uh, this base, basis zero and one, and the generic state is given by, the proposition of zero and one. And uh, physical, uh, perhaps most uh, basic uh, physical realization is spin one half system like this, but we don't need to mind how it is realized uh, as we use as finally. And uh, we have uh, two important operations. First, uh, uh, action of unit operator. Now uh, we are going from left to right. Uh, this is uh, called quantum sack notation. So we are multiplying the unit operator U. And another inter, uh, important uh, operation is measurement, yeah, which which assigns the classic, classical number depends on the coefficient with uh, the probabilities, alpha square and beta square. And uh, single qubit gates used here uh, as opposed. Basically, this uh, this is given by Pauli matrices x, y, and z. And in particular, x plays as a plays as a not in logical operation because this flips zero and one. And uh, we also 
use uh, exponentiation of polymath x, y, and z gates. And uh, if we want to, since quantum computer has a multiple qubits, uh, we, we also need to consider multiple qubit case. Uh, for two qubit case, we have a four dimensional qubit space. And uh, for any qubit case, we have a two to the n dimensional qubit space. And we can always expand the um, state by these bases. And uh, there are also get acting on ma multiple, multiple qubits. Here, I, I use uh, only one kind of two, two qubit gets. Uh, this is called the controlled X. Uh, this is defined by this relation. Um, this is basically, uh, and uh, this, this does uh, nothing when the first qubit is zero, but uh, this multiplies X on the second qubit if the first qubit is one. And the uh, rule of the con game is as a problem. So basically rule of the computation, quantum computation for me is to do something interesting thing by a combination of action of unitary operators and, uh, and the measurement. So by using a compli uh, complicated combination of these, uh, these operations, uh, we could uh, do faster, faster computation than, than, than classical algorithm for, yeah, for some problem. And uh, here I, I'd like to introduce a notion of a classical simulator for quantum computer. So, so far uh, I explained, uh, I explained uh, as if uh, the quantum circuit is an isolated system, but uh, in the other quantum computer, a qubit in quantum circuit is not an isolated system. So there are interaction with the environment and we, we have errors. And uh, here uh, we use uh, uh, a tool called the simulator uh, uh, as a preparation. Uh, the simulator is a tool to simulate quantum computer by classical computer. So this gives, uh, this does not have errors and ideal answers. And, uh, but uh, the interface is uh, almost like uh, real quantum, uh, using quantum computer. And the same code can be run in quantum computer with speed up. And this is a useful tool to test the algorithm and estimate computational resource. Uh, by computational resource, I mean number of qubits and gates. And this, uh, this was a uh, lightning review of a quantum computation. Do you have a question? Uh, I have a sub, uh, some questions. Yeah. So here, uh, when you do using the simulator, how many qubits can you use? Like the size of the ah. qubit. Okay, I think um, if we use no normal computer, it is uh, like uh, it is around twenty or something like this, twenty or twenty-five. So this is basically the same as uh, as a uh, Dimension of vector space where we can we can do exact diagonalization or something like that. Yeah, because the actual vector space is exponentially is growing exponentially like this. But uh, but some strong people uh, use a GPU, and for that case, uh, uh, we can use a, we can use a, yeah. Bigger, bigger side of a And the second question is maybe it's not relevant in your talk, but uh, I just because of curiosity. So mm -hmm. here everything is like a spin shift up and down, but uh, yeah. some people are like in high energy, people are working on like a color field or this kind of thing. How can you, in the, in the supercomputer, can you, how can you, Deal with this kind of color field. Ah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good question. So, yeah, yeah. I'm also interested in, yeah, that case. And uh, so far, yeah, so far, people usually do is, uh, yeah, to make a truncation on the 
on the kilobeta space, uh, even for bosonic case, and then map, map it to map the regularized system to spin si system. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, is, uh, it would be also interesting. Uh, it would be also useful to yeah, use this uses some quantum computers composed of boson boson or something like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Okay, next I will uh, relate the Schrodinger model in terms of those uh, qubits. Uh, and uh, first uh, we have to uh, first, uh, I, I explain a uh, general strategy to put the quantum field theory in qubits. Uh, to put the quantum field theory on quantum computer, we have first we have to regularize the Hilbert space. Then we rewrite the regularized the theory in terms of qubits. And uh, the Schrodinger model is uh, the simplest non trivial example with gauge interaction in this context. Uh, because uh, one plus one dimensional gauge field has uh, only one dimensional physical Hilbert space. So, and also lattice fermion has a finite dimensional Hilbert space. So, for the case of a Schrodinger model, if we focus on physical Hilbert space, then the Hilbert space, a uh, dimension of Hilbert space, becomes a finite just by putting the theory on lattice with a uh, appropriate boundary condition. Uh, and uh, we need additional treatments for, for scalars and the higher dimensional gauge field. And uh, this is a Schrodinger model, with, uh, Lagrangian of the Schrodinger model with the first term. And by taking a temporal gauge, uh, we have uh, this Hamiltonian. And then physical states are constrained by Gauss law, this Gauss law. So this is a continuum description. And uh, since this is a low dimension model, there are uh, some analytical approach are accessible. First, uh, when the mass of fermion is very, very large, fermion can be integrated out and the theory becomes effectively pure Maxwell theory with theta. And this is free theory and we can solve it. And uh, another special, uh, a special feature for one plus one dimensional system is that uh, we can use boson notation. Uh, it is known that uh, the Schrodinger model is equi equivalent to this scalar field theory. And then the important uh, thing is that uh, G is uh, translated to basically mass of the scalar and the mass is translated to, to coupling in the scalar field theory. So when mass is Zero, uh, we can exactly solve this model even for even when uh, gauge coupling is strong. And also, small mass regime can be approximated by mass perturbation theory. And, uh, and if we consider, if we try to simulate uh, this model by conventional Monte Carlo approach, we have a same problem when theta is not small. So first in Minkowski space, we have, we have a high oscillating behavior. And even in Euclidean case, uh, since uh, the coefficient of the term is uh, complex. So we have, uh, we typically have a high oscillating behavior for non-small data. Yes. Is, is, is the action really a four-dimensional integral or, or is that a typo? Ah, sorry, <laughs> this is the type. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, this is two dimension. Oh, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm surprised. I, I have I have used this slide more than 10 times, but uh, nobody have, have not pointed out this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, and this is a map of accessibility and difficulty in the Schrodinger model. And first, when mass is small, we can, mass is small or mass is very, very large, uh, we, can, we can get a good approximation by analytic computation. 
And also when theta is not theta is small, we can we can use Monte Carlo summation. But uh, when theta is not small and the mass is intermediate, uh, uh, um, <coughs> yeah, we 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 need we basically need a new maker technique, uh, which does not suffer from a uh, sign problem. So we can make prediction here. Okay, next, uh, uh, let us regularize the Schwinger model. First, we, I'd like to put the Schwinger model on lattice. For fermion, uh, there, are much, uh, for, there are multiple choices of uh, lattice fermion, but uh, here we use a stuck-out fermion, where we put uh, different components of the direct fermion on different lattices. And we put the gauge field on link, and here, since we are considering Hamiltonian formalism, we also have a canonical conjugate momentum of a link variable. So pictorially, we put the degrees of freedom like this. And this is a, a Hamiltonian of a, the lattice theory with stuck as fermion. The first term is a gauge kind of term. The second one is a fermion kind of term. Finally, we have a fermion mass term, and there are some parameters. Uh, we have a lattice spacing, gauge coupling, fermion mass, and theta, and the charge of dynamical fermion. And we have a canonical commutation relation like this. And this is a lattice version of Gauss law, uh, where physical states should, satisfy, should be satisfied. And uh, and uh, first, we uh, to focus on physical Hilbert space. We would like to eliminate gauge degrees of freedom. And now we take on boundary condition and uh, solve Gauss law. Then, then the uh, lattice electric field is given by fermionic operator, fermion operator, and uh, in the in, in the gauge, uh, residual gauge for the ring, uh, we get uh, this Hamiltonian. Uh, this looks a bit complicated, but uh, now we have uh, only lattice fermion. And, uh, and this action finally is mentioned here. Yeah. So, why open boundary conditions? Ah, yeah, yeah, this is an important point. Uh, yeah. If we take a purely boundary condition, we cannot completely solve Gauss law. Because uh, here we are solving uh, solving uh, Ln by using uh, degrees of freedom on left, and for open band condition, then we can we can rewrite uh, Ln in terms of boundary condition and only boundary condition and the fermion. But uh, for periodic boundary condition, there is a one remaining uh, dynamical degrees of freedom. I see. Yeah, then there is a physical degrees of one physical bosonic field degrees of freedom. And uh, for that case, uh, Hilbert space is uh, still infinite dimensional, even if we con are considering the physical Hilbert space. So we need additional truncation for periodic boundary condition. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the good question. So uh, I want to understand this further. You're, you're, you're putting some sort of Dirichlet boundary condition on one side of the mm. system, and then in the other one, you have something like a Neumann boundary condition where it's free to oscillate, or do you have Dirichlet on both sides? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I, I, I don't need, yeah, I, I, I don't put the uh, boundary condition on the other side. side. Oh. So that's determined by the total charge, right? So different. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, yes, in principle, yes. But uh, here, uh, I'm interested in uh, on, only the vacuum, vacuum, and uh, also uh, I use uh, I, I I only use the uh, time evolution preserving uh, total electric electric charge. So so in this sense, the Boundary condition, uh, and so so I basically I'm basically uh, 
restricting uh, the theory to the sector with total uh, vanishing total electric charge. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so in, in this sense, the value on the, the other side is fixed or something. Yeah, fixed. Uh, I have also two questions also because I'm yeah. not expert on this lattice, so maybe it's just very basic and nice, but yeah. First question is uh, here also boundary condition. When you say boundary condition, is on the gauge theory, the gauge field or the fermion field? Uh, this is for the electric field. Uh, so like uh, when there is boundary, the, the gauge symmetry is uh, is just some strange in, on the boundary. So people used to introduce it like edge mode and so on. So here, is there such a, I, I'm not sure in 2D, but- Ah, uh, uh, I, I, I see, I see. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, okay, this is a good point. Uh, okay, this is also a good point. Uh, so, so, so since we have a theta term, and uh, then um, theta term is a total derivative, and when we have a boundary, this gives the boundary chance I'm on term, mm. boundary one dimensional chance I'm term or Wilson line, mm. and uh, and then this means that uh, we break the periodicity of theta here. And uh, yeah, and uh, the, yeah, the transformation theta to from theta to theta plus two pi gives a gives a boundary chance Simon term. So we need to care about uh, this point. And the uh, second mm -hmm. question is also mm -hmm. like uh, in usually uh, gauge you to the in the continuum you have to deal with like a uh, unit is also ghost and so on. But here, lattice gauge theory, you don't need uh, like an ghost or. Ah, yeah, here, uh, yeah, I, I think we could also use a uh, ghost, but uh, here uh, I'm, yeah, I'm fixing a gauge and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't need, need to, yeah. We, yeah, for, I think for more general gauge, we can use a ghost, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so this is the Rati Hamiltonian. And, uh, and um, but uh, I, I look, I'd like to also put, introduce a probe charge because uh, I'm interested in potential between probe charge. And we introduce the probe charge as a force. So that is people typically introduce a probe charge by by using Wilson uh, typically a uh, long rectangle Wilson And by using Stokes theorem, this is a, this is written like this exponential of F. And, uh, but this is a local theta term, local theta term with theta equal to two pi QP. And here I'd like, I in, include this local theta term to the action and then switch to Hamiltonian formulas. Then the problem becomes uh, to analyze the system with a space dependent theta term like this. So we have a kind of step function here. Then we compute the ground state energy in the presence of the effect of probe. Then we can compute the potential between probe. So from now on, I also, include the probe charge by theta down. And uh, next uh, I'd like to go to, I'd like to map the system, the spin system. The problem is uh, to rewrite the theory, uh, to rewrite uh, the Fermi operator in terms of a spin operator satisfying these anti-commutation relations. And, and there are multiple solutions to this problem and the most Traditional one is called Jordan Wigner transformation, which is explicitly given by this. Here, Xn, Yn, and Zn are poly matrices at site n. And uh, using this 
uh, this transformation, we have a huge cancellation of Z, factor Z, and we have this Hamiltonian. So basically, at first we have uh, only spin operators here, and basically this is a XY model here with a space dependent longitudinal, longitudinal, long, longitudinal magnetic field and some weird non-local interaction. And the non-local interaction comes from uh, solving Gauss law. So although it looks like uh, complicated, but uh, anyway, this is the qubit description of the Schrodinger model. And uh, we can directly apply the quantum algorithm used for spin system. So now we are ready to apply quantum algorithm for large Schrodinger model. Uh, and uh, next, I will explain algorithm to prepare vacuum by quantum algorithm. Uh, do you have a question so far? All right. So let me explain algorithm. So before that, uh, I like to I'd like to give some express kind of expression for atmosphere of using quantum computer. So suppose we would like to measure the superposition of zero and one. And uh, now, so nowadays we can, nowadays we can use a quantum computer in cloud for free. Uh, this is the interface of uh, IBM quantum experience. So we can, we can make a quantum circuit by drop and drop like this. And then we have a, we have a finite times measurement. And then we get uh, this kind of histogram for the probability having uh, the state zero and one. So I, and uh, as I said, the rule of quantum computation for me is uh, to do something interesting, interesting by a combination of uh, of uh, action of the interpreter and uh, measurements. And uh, yeah, idea is uh, to express physical quantities in terms of uh, this kind of probabilities and measure the probability. So this is a basic idea of the quantum algorithm. I have a question yeah. here. So mm -hmm. When you say 10,000 times of measurements, mm -hmm. uh, you construct some state and uh, you with that state, so you measure the 1,000 measurement, or you like to do the, this kind of computation, 10,000? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a, we do, we do 1,000 times, expo, uh, we do experiment 1,000 times or something like that. So, yeah, yeah of course, uh, after, if we measure the system after measurement, just, state is a fi completely fixed. So yeah. we need a different, different experiment. Uh, I see. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You measure the whole qubit or each qubit? Uh, for this case, only one qubit. Oh, okay. okay. Ah, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. OK. And uh, here is a. Uh, Algorithm to prepare a vacuum in this talk. Uh, there are indeed multiple ways to prepare a vacuum. And uh, here I use an algorithm called aryabatic state preparation. So in this algorithm, we first choose the initial Hamiltonian H0 of a practically chosen simple system. And, uh, and uh, so the, uh, the ground state of the H0 should be known and unique. And in the next step, uh, we consider adiabatic Hamiltonian satisfying this. Time, this is time-dependent Hamiltonian. And this should be uh, initial Hamiltonian at initial time and, uh, and target Hamiltonian at the final time. And uh, this should be slowly varying uh, when, when the parameter t is very, very large. Finally, we use a uh, adiabatic theorem, which claims that uh, if we, if HAT has a unique ground state with a finite gap for any t, then the ground state of uh, 
target Hamiltonian is obtained by this time evolution. So we gradually change the vacuum from uh, the one of initial to the target Hamiltonian by this time evolution. This is the algorithm. But in practice, we uh, since we have an integral and uh, we have a we you know, we have an infinite t, so we have to regularize it. So we take a finite t, finite capital T, and also discretize discretize integral by the product. Here, you t is uh, exponential uh, time inversion beta for small fraction of t. And uh, in practice, uh, we choose uh, Hamiltonian, time dependent Hamiltonian as both. So, first, the uh, initial Hamiltonian is uh, basically a massive limit, massive limit of the Schwinger model. And then it is known that the vacuum is uh, very simple, simple, like one zero, one zero, one zero. And then we gradually put uh, other parameters like this. So, you can check that uh, when small t is capital T, uh, we get uh, original Hamiltonian. So we use uh, this, this algorithm. And also in practice, we we express these uh, time reversion beta in terms of uh, elementary gates, which I explained, uh, like uh, Rx, Ry, Rz. Okay, and this was the algorithm, our algorithm. And next, I will. I will show our numerical results. Uh, do you have any question on algorithm part? What's the scheme? All right, so. I have a practical question, which is yes. you use the simulator to get this Hamiltonian, but if you actually use the quantum computer, do you have enough time to perform the adiabatic algorithm or is there some better way to prepare the initial state so that you can run it? Uh, so we are, what, what, Okay, so Sorry. in mm -hmm. your computer, you have a perfect quantum computer for small numbers of qubits. If we yeah, put yeah, yeah. a real quantum computer, do you have enough time to run the adiabatic algorithm? Ah, in, you mean in current quantum computer? Yes. Ah, okay, okay, good question. So, of course, uh, if, we, if we do not use error, quantum error correction, we can, yeah, we can, yeah, we can use it, but uh, with quantum error correction, I think, uh, yeah, it's dif it's difficult. Okay. Yeah, we need a huge number of qubits. So pra pra practically, uh, we need, uh, so practically we need uh, 16 or 20 qubits without, without errors, but uh, it is currently difficult to implement uh, uh, simulate uh, such size of a system in real quantum computer without the quantum uh, with quantum error correction. Yeah. I also have a question. Yes. Uh, is the gap uh, remain open during the adiabatic evolution? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, yeah. You know uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes, please, yeah. please say again. Open during the adiabatic e evolution in your in your system. Ah, okay, okay. So uh, are you asking uh, whether the Schwinger model has a gap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, this is a good question. So uh, uh, the, the answer is uh, it depends on parameters. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm asking uh, like whether your adiabatic path along your adiabatic path the gap remains open or not. Ah, oh, okay. So I we expect uh, this is basically open, but but uh, but uh, but for intermediate, but since uh, the system with the intermediate time has not been has not been studied well, so yeah, so it's. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, we needed, yeah, we needed to do some kind of check, but, uh, at, but at least for target Hamiltonian uh, or the Schwinger model, it is known that the Schwinger model has a 
open gap and theta is pi. So it is, it is known that when theta equals pi and the mass is larger than some certain values, we have a first order phase transition and we have a degeneration of the vacuum. And oh, yeah. of course, mm. when the target system has a closed gap, we cannot use this always. Yeah, if the gap closes along your adiabatic path, then the the time required to uh, converge into the ground state would be really large. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we, this is really closing, uh, we cannot use it. But but if gap gap is very very small, we have to take very very large cap capital T. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I have a slide explaining this one. Uh, this. Uh, yeah, so this is a very important point. Uh, so it is known that uh, systematic error of the apathetic state preparation is uh, bounded by this relation. So when, yeah, for example, when we have a uh, we have a closed gap, gap system in the infinite volume limit. So gap is a, like a, like, like an inverse of a power of a volume. So for that case, capital T should be, should be scaled like a power of a volume. So this is a very, very large. This needs a very huge complexity. So this is so basically when we would like to, do this algorithm, yeah, we would like the situation that uh, we have a very, very small gap. All right. Okay, so let's move on to numerical estimation. Without, when kick one without both. First, I'd like to consider a vacuum expectation value of mass operator which is given by this. And practically, we, uh, we consider average over the space. And uh, once we get to the vacuum, after this is after Jordan, we get to our summation. And once we get to the vacuum, we can compute the wave as a force. First, we can insert the complete system, complete system here. And then, uh, we have a eigenvalue of that. Now, here we have uh, only the probability having uh, each basis inside of the vacuum. So we can compute uh, the vacuum wave of mass operator in terms of uh, these, pro in terms of the combination of these probabilities. So what we should do is uh, only to the only prepare the vacuum. And uh, in practice, uh, since we are considering that is your theory and uh, we needed to take continuum limit and the infinite, uh, we, we take uh, continuum limit and the infinite volume limit and so on. But uh, here, because of the, uh, because of restri restriction of time, uh, I only show the, Result after continuum limit and the infinite volume limit in this section. And this is a result for chiral condensation for massless case, uh, where we have an exact result and we have a, we take uh, some values of parameters. And the maximum number of qubits is 16, or ma maximum, and the, the number of qubits is uh, the same as uh, the number of sites for this case. Uh, I'm plotting uh, vacuum excess chiral condensation as a function of gauge coupling. And uh, the red line is the exact result and the blue symbols are our result. And, uh, and we see that uh, the, our results agree with the exact result within estimated errors. I have a question. Yes. Uh, what do you mean by after continuum limit? Ah, great, great question. Um, so. So we are 
So we are considering the lattice, lattice field theory, but and uh, but we are interested in uh, in a continuum theory. So we have to take a to zero, uh, a lattice spacing, and we have to take a to zero. Yeah, this so is a. Like uh, okay, I, I explain it. Uh, this is a procedure of uh, infinite volume limit and continuum limit. Uh, on the left hand side, I fix uh, lattice spacing and uh, take uh, infinite volume limit like this. And uh, the horizontal axis is uh, basically uh, one over volume. And in this plot, uh, 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 the interception gives the infinite volume limit with a fixed uh, lattice spacing. And then in the, on the right hand side, uh, we, I'm, I'm con taking continuum limit. Uh, each point is a uh, infinite volume limit for fixed uh, lattice spacing. And uh, I'm doing a fitting here. And then the interception, in the interception, we get uh, we get the limit a to zero. And here, and, and in the in our new maker simulation result, I I plot this uh, interception of the fitting. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this is the meaning of continuity. Okay. Sorry, did I? Can I ask a question? So, yeah, in numerical, I, well, I was a little bit confused about like. Did you use the IBM computer to do this, or did you use the classical computer? Uh, okay, I, I, I use the classical simulator provided by IBM. Oh, oh. so yeah, it, so it's not a quantum computer. Uh, yeah, it's not a quantum computer, and but uh, but uh, it's a uh, it's provided by IBM and and. Uh, and uh, so it's classical computer, but uh, the interface is almost like uh, using a quantum computer. And uh, if we if we rewrite the the code for few few lines, then we can the same code can be submitted to real quantum computer in IBM. I see. I see. Yeah. So so practically, what we are doing is just doing the. Linear algebra by classical computer, but uh, the interface is, is almost like uh, almost like uh, like this, like uh, putting a gate or something like that. Yeah, but uh, inside of the computer, uh, they are just uh, multiplying matrices. I see. Yeah. So, can you say that this algorithm, even for classical computing, is a lot better than I don't know, like? other algorithms like oh, of course the it seems like it's a lot better than monte carlo of course but um yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah 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 also we don't have a speed up by using quantum algorithm but uh, this algorithm itself is better than conventional monte carlo approach yeah because uh, mm -hmm. we are avoiding the same yeah we do, we do not suffer from the same problem in this algorithm i see thank you very much yeah, yeah. When theta is not small, yeah. Mm. But uh, but I'm not claiming uh, our approach is the best for this problem. Yeah, because uh, I'm aware that uh, tensor network work, work approach uh, is better for this problem, and I will mention this point uh, at, at at the last of, at the end of my talk. And this is a result for massive case, and we are plotting the cyber uh, chiral condensation uh, against the mass. So we have uh, two lines, uh, both are mass perturbations, and uh, I'm plotting uh, this value for theta equals zero and theta equals three pi over five, which is not small. Uh, for both cases, we see that uh, we see agreement for small small mass small mass regime. But uh, as increasing M, we have a we have a deviation from mass perturbation. And uh, for the green case, uh, theta is not small. And, uh, and uh, 
conventional mo, mo, uh, it's difficult to analyze by both conventional Monte Carlo approach and analytical computation. So the result here can be regarded as a, a prediction. And the next, uh, I will introduce uh, dyna uh, I will introduce a higher charge of dynamic fermion and probe. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Okay. So why yes. was the tensor network seems to be deviating from the mass perturbation result? Uh, Is it within the air bar or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm also one. Uh, we are on the, also wondering this one. So yeah, one satellite is uh, that yeah we can send to approach work approach. Do not usually put the error bars, and uh, there may be error, but uh, I'm not sure. And also, yeah, their paper do not compute uh, compare with compare their result with mass perturbation. So. Yeah, we are not sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to higher charge. Uh, on mm -hmm. the previous slide, mm -hmm. uh, I think I missed. Uh, so the, the green dashed line is what? It's a mass, mass perturbation for this value of theta. Okay, okay. And the green data points? Uh, uh, New make estimation result for this value of theta. Okay, and the reference is not given. Hmm. This, is coming from, uh, this is coming from a reference, right? I mean, somebody has done this. Uh, this is our simulation result. I see. Okay. Uh, uh, How, uh, okay. The, the blue ones? The blue, blue ones are result of what theta equals zero. And they are also so, your results. Uh, yeah, this is also our result. Okay, I see. For both values of the Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next I I quickly uh, show the result for higher Q. Uh, this is a repeated slide, so let me skip it. And uh, you may feel uh, peculiar for negative tension behavior, but uh, here is the explanation that. Uh, uh, it's not, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not a dangerous thing. Yeah. So in particular, uh, in particular negative tension behavior appears only when QP is not the integer times Q. So this does not mean, it means uh, the theory itself is unstable by pair creation. Okay, so let me introduce uh, our numerical result. Uh, this is a result for massless case uh, with QP over Q is an integer. So we have a potential as a function of distance. And uh, we, so we compare the result, of, uh, we compare our simulation result with analytical result. And uh, we basically have an agreement, although we have some deviation, but um, yeah. But uh, the important thing is it's not, it's completely different from linear behavior. So it's like a script. It's more like a screen. And, uh, and this is the result for massive guess with uh, QP over Q integer. And again, we have a, yeah, we, we do not have a linear behavior. And this is a comparison for both cases. And uh, this, this looks consistent with the expected screening behavior. And uh, let us also, or uh, explore the regime uh, which is expected to have a confinement. So this is a, when QP is a, this is a result for non-integer QP over Q. So, and uh, I'm comparing uh, massless case and massless case. So we have a something like, a, yeah, we have a kind of roughly linear behavior. So this is a, consistent with the expected uh, component of behavior. And, uh, and uh, I'd like to also show the uh, change of the sign of the string tension. This is a result for some parameters with various theta for the potential. 
So we see that uh, if we change theta, we have a change of sign of storing tension like this. And uh, if we would like to, uh, to check, if we would like to check whether these coefficients are uh, reasonable, uh, we have to take continuum limit like this. And this is the result of a continuum limit for storing tension. And uh, the horizontal line is the result of a mass part ratio theory. And we basically have a agreement for at least for small mass. Uh, for large M, this may be a violation of mass partition theory. And uh, this is a result for energy density at the negative storing tension regime for various uh, values of the probe distance. So we see that, and, uh, and basically potential is given by the given by the integration of the energy from here. So we see that uh, we have a lower energy inside of the probe. This is necessary to get the negative storing tension behavior. So we indeed have the, indeed have a lower energy inside the probe. Okay, let me summarize. So quantum computation is suitable for Hamilton homogeny, uh, which is a free from the same problem. And we construct the vacuum and uh, find a good, good result for chiral condensation. We also explore, explore the screening, confinement, negative string tension problem, and so on. And, uh, and, uh, and this is our uh, The problem in this talk involve only ground states. And it is known that the tensor network approach is better for this service. And, and we can use the DMRG, for example, with uh, order 100 of the site. And uh, this is, wor this is working, our work in progress. And we are also searching critical point at the like fine machine model. And it is also interesting to uh, try other ways to get there. But, and uh, we, there are also many interesting problems. And uh, this is a preliminary result of DMRG. And, uh, and uh, we have, uh, yeah, yeah, at least for this problem, we have a better result. And uh, so I'd like to in, fu to, to in future something not efficiently simulated both by Monte Carlo and the Tensor Network. Oh, okay, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, there have been uh, many questions and uh, comments during the talk, but uh, do you have still uh, questions? Anyone on site or, ah, oh, please. Yeah, I have a question. Um, how large are yeah. the electric field fluctuations in the in the ground state? Uh, so la, la, how large is the what? The ground state. There's a local electric field at, at each link, right? How, yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how large are the fluctuations of that electric field? Fluctuation of the of the electric field. Yeah, you gave us the expectation yeah. value. That's the string tension in the presence of the stuff, uh, but the the. the uh, yeah, uh, but sorry, I have not directly studied the electric, yeah, the body, measure the body of electric field itself. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, this includes uh, local electric energy, but uh, this also includes uh, the contribution from fermion, fermion part. Other questions or comments? Ah, please. Uh, do you have your microphone? Okay. Sorry, yeah, a bit of a generic question. So how, yeah. how generic is the statement that you can avoid the sign problem by going into the Hamiltonian formulation? Was it specific to the model you used or? Um, ah, okay. This, this aspect itself is a universal and generic, but the problem is that uh, in Hamiltonian formalism, we have a huge, huge complexity, basically. Yeah. Okay, so you're, paying, yeah, but, uh, so you're, you're curing the sign problem, but you get an extra complexity as a price. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, thank but, you. But uh, that complexity is uh, uh, still better than using conventional approach when same problem is very severe. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So following that question, am I right that mm -hmm. your the complexity is this particular problem was the non-local coupling from the Gauss's law or? Yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, 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 and also, uh, uh, okay, bo both, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, using Gauss law also gives a, okay, mm -hmm. originally the Hamiltonian, the terms of Hamiltonian was order n, and using Gauss law, this becomes order n square, and, and this is one point. And also, since we are using Hamiltonian for Biden, uh, the, the dimension of Hilbert space is also exponentially large. And this is a dominant contribution to huge complex. I see. Thank you yeah. very much. And the good thing on using real quantum computer is that uh, naively we expect the complexity becomes order n square. Mm. So that, that itself is a generic statement that the complexity of the number of terms in is going to be n and just changing to n squared. Uh, um, then it, uh, well, um, I think this is a Okay, this is a particular feature for one plus one dimensional model. Yeah. Yes. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, yes. So yes. in a higher than one plus one dimensional model, mm -hmm. uh, are there difficulties uh, mapping your, uh, I mean, model to the actual qubits in uh, Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a, computers? Yeah, yeah, there is a practice difficulty practically, yeah. So in principle, of course, uh, for example, in two plus one dimension, we can, in principle, we can always map the system, the spin system by by this kind of transformation. If we relabel the two dimension, uh -huh. like one dimension, yeah. but this gives a very, very non-local interaction. Yeah. And I think practically it's not convenient. And uh, so, so, yeah, now I'm working on this aspect by considering a different kind of uh, kind of uh, map, map, map to spin system. Yeah, indeed, there is a nice paper by Kapustin and collaborators, and I'd like to use their te techniques. I see. Thank you. Yeah, this is a very good point. Yeah. Are there other questions or comments? So if not, let's thank the speaker again. Uh, okay, uh, are you speaking? Sorry, uh, Sama stood up in, from the back. Uh, 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 okay, please, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I, I have a question. So, so you're using this adiabatic uh, preparation of the ground state. So mm. are there any benefits of your method compared to other methods such as like- uh, Okay, okay, this is a good question. Uh, Okay, this is an um, advantage and this advantage of uh, our method. So the good point is that uh, th this algorithm is uh, guaranteed to be correct as long as uh, we satisfy the assumption of uh, adiabatic theorem. And also another good thing is uh, we can directly get the excited state under some condition, uh, basically for having an open gap bit for neighboring state. But this advantage is that uh, this does not work when we violate uh, the assumption of adiabatic theorem. And uh, another thing, uh, another disadvantage is basically cost. So this algorithm basically requires many gates. And uh, for example, if we use, use a variational algorithm, it is known that uh, the number of gates requires is much smaller. But the uh, disadvantage of a uh, variational problem is that uh, it is not guaranteed that uh, we are really getting uh, getting uh, true, true ground state. So 
they are, they, in, they are a pros and cons for each algorithm, basically. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. So, ah, oh, Chete. I think uh, you talk that uh, some people try to com try to combine the GPU and the quantum computing. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know the current progress? Well, yeah, yeah. For example, well, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I have seen some benchmark, but yeah, and uh, and uh, yeah. There, yeah, I, I aware, I'm aware that uh, yeah, there are people, uh, people making uh, yeah classical simulator in, in terms of GPU and uh, yes, they are yeah, 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 improve yeah, they are improving uh, performance. Okay, yeah. let me ask because from my experience, I know that GPU is only useful. It's very okay. It's very useful in in studying a control gate gradient. But uh, mm -hmm. so, do you mean that the people just improve the performance of the control gate gradient from the quantum algorithm? Mm -hmm. so, so I I didn't get the so, gradient. Yeah, control gate gradient. Because I know that the, in the large QC community, people use the GPU for the control gate gradient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I want to ask uh, whether people improve the control gate gradient by combining the uh, mm. GPU and the quantum computation. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I just know that uh, they are always uh, try, yeah, trying, yeah, trying to get the- Yeah, sometimes well, only use it in the control gate, gate gradient because GPU is not good for the trans transfer, uh, uh, transferring between the classical, uh, between the CPU and the GPU. So sometimes we we'll only use either to the GPU. Mm. Yeah. This is what I know. It is in my old group, we, we just did it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know little about the CPU, but uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I heard that the GPU is uh, stronger for treating ma ma matrix or multiplying matrix and uh, Yes, and uh, it, it sounds uh, useful to useful for yeah simulate yeah simulator. Yes, but uh, for mm. other parts, I think it's hard to do that like, due to the algorithm problems. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm not sure about the details. I will, yeah. thank you. That's fine. Okay, thank you. It's uh, already time, so uh, thank you, uh, Masatsumi, again, yeah, and uh, the session continues in maybe four minutes at about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you.